healthy correction for the market. So we're, we're bursting the bubble of the market sentiment of how greedy the market has been on the way up. Hello everyone. Today our special guest, popular trader and YouTuber, Jason Pizzino argues that the narrative about the bursting of this SBI 500 and Bitcoin might have another angle. So, if you're ready to navigate the exciting world of crypto, Bitcoin, and stocks, hit that subscribe button now. Join us on this exhilarating adventure towards financial growth and success. Don't miss out. Subscribe, like, and share today. The August September period as being a bit of a slop and chop type scenario. What does that mean? Well, basically, the price ranges are potentially remaining in a trading range throughout the period of August and September. This is historical data of 94, 95 ish years that show this particular pattern playing out time and time again. The important thing to note here is not the prices themselves, but mostly the pattern. Now we might get some little rises up after we've seen these moves to the downside, like we're seeing now for the uh, S&P. You can see we've had some tests and a little rise and then another test. Maybe we'll have a little rise, but maybe we come back down and test these regions along the way to further consolidation before more upside. But of course, we're talking about bubbles bursting at this point, and it's a really good uh, state for the market to be in if we can get these bubbles to burst and they have started bursting. I'll show you that data in a moment as well. So I just want to remind us where we currently sit in the market. This is probably the stage that we're in through August and September, which is also going to spill over into Bitcoin as well as we wait for the market to digest the mega moves it has had in 2023. Remember what we've done here on the channel. We've looked at these lows coming in for June, for October, and for that higher low in March, when the majority of the market has been extremely fearful. They're also fearful through this section here, hoping for further downside. But we've really looked at this as a time for probably the last consolidation before we would move higher because of the higher lows. So basically some pure TA here mixed in with the market sentiment, how fearful that market is. And that is going to be the premise of what we're looking at today. When it comes to the market sentiment, we're finally getting the cool off and we're finally getting that bubble bursting on the market sentiment. But your edge, why you're here, is because you understand, or at least you're learning to understand, market structure, technically, when we look at the chart, and then knowing how to marry that together with the market sentiment. So we have the technicals, we have economic data that we can understand better, I would say, than 90% of people because 90% analysts, Wall Street, whatever, social media, they typically lose money. That's, that's a fact. And as we continue to follow through when it comes to understanding charts and the market sentiment, it's starting to put us on the right side of the market more often than not. We're not always 100% right, but more often than not, and that's what matters. What matters is we can understand that and we can manage our finances in the market, manage our positions. What we're looking at next is the earnings season. So this is typically what many investors ride their investments on. Basically, they think that when there is a negative quarter or that earnings are declining, that the stock prices should also decline. So what we've seen is uh, three so far, three consecutive quarters of declines. But what has happened in the market? Well, for 2023, here's your 2022, that's uh, close to 2023 as well, so 2022 and 2023, we've been up and up and up. So prices have gone up. So just because stocks have negative earnings, their earnings are declining, it doesn't mean the stock price has to go down. This isn't just not one uh, scenario. This happens time and time again. But for some reason, the majority of them forget that price is what we trade. We don't trade earnings. This is absolutely ridiculous. And it's a surefire way to lose money like the 90%. It happens time and time again. You don't want to believe me, that's okay. Just go and do the research. As we always say, do the research. And that's what I do here on the channel, doing the research, sharing it with you guys as well. So you can see through the noise and pretty much how majority of people typically get it wrong. Again, not trying to toot my own horn here, just want to stay pure with the data and remind ourselves of the history and what we have presented here on the channel, which you can obviously go back and watch any of these videos to see what we have talked about at the lows 
in the market. Okay, so earnings among S and P five hundred companies have declined for three consecutive quarters. Earnings decline, earnings declines rarely last beyond four consecutive quarters. So we typically don't see four consecutive quarters. And what I alluded to potentially in the title is that we're seeing buying as the market's going down. This is typical of a bull market. That's what we want to see as well. So that's what we've seen here. When prices held up despite, so prices holding up despite declining uh, earnings, forward returns were above average. So we typically see the forward returns being above average. This is some pretty crazy data. So this is what we're looking at here. S&P after three consecutive year-on-year -year quarterly earnings declines. If that's all a bit of too much to, to digest, don't worry. The main thing is earnings going down year-on-year -year, three times in a row. What do we see? This is the interesting part. If you're a bear, look away now because this is very painful. This is very, very, very painful for bears because eight out of 10 times, remember we're macro here, we're looking longer picture, one year, two year, three years. We're not looking at the short term, even though the short term is still positive as well. One year later, after this signal, which we have got, remember, earnings are going down. What happens one year later? Eight out of 10 times, eight out of 10 times, the price is higher. There's a positive return eight out of 10 times from here. What's the average max gain? 16%. So we've been looking at this stuff for over 12 months, not, not only this particular piece of data, but many pieces of data where we've looked forward, what happens six months from now, what happens 12 months from now, going back to June, going back to March of 2023, and has shown that the market has been up and the market actually did go up. So it just adds to the data that the market should be up. What happens two years later from this? Remember, it's not 100% guaranteed, eight out of 10, maybe it is one of those two out of 10 times. I don't think that's, I don't think this year is gonna be one of those two out of 10 times. There will be one in the future, but it's not lining up for now, especially in a pre-election year. Talked about that before as well. What happens two years later? So what happens August of 2025? Eight out of 10 times, positive return, mark will be 20% higher from now. What happens three years later? Nine out of 10 times, nine out of 10 times, the market is higher again. August of 2026, okay, because we're in 2023, let's add three years, 30%, 30% higher than where it currently is. Potentially, we're going to see higher than 30%, but let's just look at what the data has shown us since 1928, okay? If you want to go against it as a bear, if you want to go against 95 years of data, be my guest. I'll love to hear from you guys in the comment section as to why, because uh, we can always be wrong. One out of those 10 times will be wrong and maybe that bears right. But remember, there's a weird feeling amongst humans in general, no matter, it's not just finances, but everywhere else, everyone looks for the most fearful thing. They look for the, uh, the thing that can go wrong. You know, it's programmed into us for millions of years, et cetera. This is, it's not different. In the financial markets, it's not different. So they look for everything to go wrong but eight or nine out of, 10 times, uh, out of 10 times, things typically go right or in a positive direction in terms of price if you were long, okay? So that's a pretty interesting one there, looking at these bubbles bursting in terms of earnings, in terms of market sentiment, which we'll get to as well. Remember, this is our macro cycle that we're looking at in terms of a top in the land prices. People will often refer to it as real estate or housing. Yes, but it's primarily land because that's where the value is, not in physical thing on top of the land because that depreciates in value. But anyway, typically we're looking towards 2025, 2026 for a top in the land price. Stock market, however, may go a little bit further, maybe into 2027, okay? So that's why we have pretty good numbers here for prices to continue going up. All right, the bubble bursting here in fear and greed, okay? Fear and greed, here is our reading. When it's over 85, meaning that there was a lot of greed, and then it cycles down to 65, you can see here in the yellow circle, within, or sorry, greater or equal to a three-week period, typically we've seen positive results six months later, three months later, one month later, 12 months later. Now, I don't really like to use things in the 60% because it's just not a high enough uh, figure, but if we start to get to 77, which is basically three out of four times, if you wanted to lean it towards the 80%, then four out of five times, it's pretty high rate of it actually happening. 12 months later, we'll get positive results, max or oh, average max gain being 17.5%. Again, you don't really want to go against 
this sort of data. You can, but the odds are against us. Why would we want to do that? I don't get it. I don't know why people are still so bearish about the markets. Probably because they don't check charts or understand the data the way it is, uh, it's written here. So this is the fear and greed for the S&P 500. And like we just saw in that uh, previous chart where we've cycled down, this is a healthy correction for the market. So we're, we're bursting the bubble of the market sentiment of how greedy the market has been on the way up, but they've been on the right side of the market. So I'm not holding anything against the old greed here. Because we are on the right side of the market in a macro sense, higher lows, higher highs, breakouts, huge moves to the upside after the breakout, you can't deny that because it is a fact in the chart now. After we were talking about it on the channel for months and months and months, now we're seeing a cycle back down in that sentiment. Really, really healthy for markets, especially in the early stages of the bull market. Let's take a quick look back to a previous bull market, 2000, into the peak of January 2022. You can see us getting into these high areas here, above 80, 85, cycling back down through September of 2020. So exactly three years ago, the market is up three years later. Let's see if it goes up again three years later from that point. Cycling back down, getting to around the green line here, which is, uh, I believe, about 25 or 30. There it is. There's your pessimism, 30, and then starting to come back up, testing it again, and then back up. There you go, up, testing the, the fear and then starting to get really greedy again. Eventually, the greed starts to wear off as you start to round the top, and you get some last ditch attempts, and then back into that fear as the market rolls over. This happens time and time again. I could spend an hour on this going through it and having a look at how the market reacts with our fear and greed. We want that fear, or we want the greed to reset so that the market can build off another base at a higher price as we've covered when we uh, marry the technicals together with the market sentiment so that we can continue to build on this macro bull market. Crypto's fear and greed has also been declining here going from greed, not even strong greed, but some greed, and just flattening out here almost dead on 50. So what we've seen in the past is higher highs and higher lows, but now we've seen a lower high. So it wouldn't be out of the question to expect the market sentiment for crypto, you know, this is the crypto fear and greed index now, we've switched over, to flush out some of these lower market sentiment prices here. It's currently sitting at 33. So I think the longer we sit here and don't move up in price, maybe a smaller move can be required to flush out that market sentiment. That's what we want to see. I would love to see that. It doesn't have to happen, but I would love to see that because then that just resets us from the moves to the upside. So I think even if we get a move down, smaller moves down because people are kind of fearful that this market's not going anywhere, smaller moves down could potentially drop the market sentiment further in this case than it has done in the past. Let's wait and see. It's a possibility. Thank you for watching the interview highlights of Pizzino. If you enjoy this highlight video, please kindly subscribe and help share this video for us to share more of this valuable content. Thank you.